And Robert, it is with heartfelt enthusiasm that I welcome you as the incoming and new director of the Department of Religion, beginning January 1, 2014. Taking up two rows, thus spreading the crowd to a larger group, I have a family members that are here today, and I would just like to point them out to you. Jane Louise Campbell, Director of the now presently Director of the U.S. Senate's Small Business Committee and former Mayor of the City of Cleveland, Sarah Yeeping, who is going to be our violinist for this morning. And we thank Sarah very much for her willingness to participate in our service. Every preacher wrestles with what to preach about. It is especially certainly true for this preacher today. I stand before you today tearfully clear that this will be my final sermon as the director of the Department of Religion of the Chautauqua Institution. But more importantly, I come before you as your pastor. I come thankful and deeply grateful in the many ways that you have changed and enriched my life. We have prayed together. We have raised our voices in song together. We have wrestled with the great and yes, often divisive issues of the day. We have celebrated our unity. And yes, truth be told, I believe we have survived our differences. We have taught one another. We are a diverse congregation of many denominations, even other religions, and that reality has been, of course, what are the words? Rich and full. The choices that we make are, in fact, a picture of our life. We are a composite of our significant choices. It might, in fact, be called our spiritual DNA. I know of no biblical text that illumines this more clearly than the book of Esther. She faced the truth, and she responded out of her own who she was with courage. She risked death and chose life, and therein is the message. It is a message repeated in biblical story after biblical story. Does not Jesus tell us that to find your life you must lose it? Is not the gospel message clear? Faithfulness requires that you lay down your life for your friends. We know from our reading of the text that Esther's choice did not in fact finally cost her life. But others have been less fortunate. Martin Luther King Jr., as all of you know by now, was formative in my own life. I was fortunate enough to work with him in the early days of the Civil Rights Movement. History is very clear about the choice that he made to serve his people, to free them from bondage of slavery and bigotry and indignity. And his choice was profoundly the right and holy choice. In Dr. King's case, it cost him his life. One of my grandchildren, Katie, now in the Peace Corps in Peru, asked me a very difficult, and her mother seated behind me, thought it was in fact a very embarrassing question. But Katie always asked embarrassing questions, so there was nothing new about this. And she looked at me and she said, Ramsey, what does it feel like to have more years behind you than ahead of you? <laughs> Katie also always spoke truth. It is true that I have more years behind me than ahead of me. So I took a very deep breath, and I thought about it, and I was also glad that I wasn't 15 again. <laughs> and I thought that, in fact, we are a composite of the choices that we have made. And when we look backward, unless we have created an awful disaster, which most of us actually have, we begin to understand our choices. There is, my friends, no choice that either you or I will ever make that affects 
only us. No choice that doesn't have ramifications for those around us and often in worlds beyond us. Perhaps the best demand we can make of ourselves. Jim, it is what they say to young doctors. Perhaps we all might take the Hippocratic Oath and say to ourselves, we will make the choice to do no harm. And we, like Esther, will have come to the kingdom for just such a time as this. Our choices have cosmic significance. Don't think of them as small and unimportant. They may not be dramatic as Esther's, and few of us have the clarity that Esther had. One thing is certain. We will have choices that will define our lives. And because of our connectedness, and because of the unity of the created order, your choices and my choices are not ours alone. Our choices are part of the fabric of life, woven from many strands and many choices. Finally, all significant choices are finally, in one sense, a matter of life and death. Nobody can tell us what choices to make. We can't see into a crystal ball, and neither you nor I will know the ultimate results of the choices we make. But I can tell you this, that the proper choice, the faithful choice, is always and forever to choose life, abundant and full and free. So, my friends, as your tapestry of life is woven, you will look back, and then you will see the pattern of choices that gives your life its unique character. It's true, not everyone can be an Esther, nor a Martin Luther King, but everyone can have a vision that sets before them an understanding of life, that sees the unity of all things, and comprehends deeply, very deeply, deep down into the soul, the power of love. And yes, we can all dream impossible dreams. We can fight unbeatable foes. And we can bear with unbearable sorrow. And Rome or the brave dare not go. And yes, my friends, the world will be better for this. That one man squatted covered with stars.